Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. We are now on air live on Friday. So happy to be here, especially that we have a very special guest. Yes, today will be a very special episode because this is our first guest on live show ever. Uh, Greg McQueen, is it correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. Wonderful. Greg McQueen is here with us and uh, we will uh, introduce Greg to uh, to all of you very, very soon. Um, and I think that we are about to hit with a really good show today. Yeah, it's about something wonderful, the most beautiful day in our lives, which is? I'm uh, confused. <laughs> a wedding day. A wedding, a wedding day. Yes, yes, because Marta, you gave a very confusing introduction because for some people it is indeed the most beautiful day in their lives. For some other is probably one of the most stressful days in, in their lives. Okay, think? we all wish for it to be the most beautiful day in our lives. <laughs> yes. Okay. So guys, before we will introduce Greg, we would like you to tell uh, we would like we would like to tell you. Oh my god, my my tongue is not good today. We would like to tell you what we will discuss about. For all of you who follow us on Facebook, you know that we have uh, came up with a little survey and we ask you six questions. I think some of them uh, were more controversial than others. And we will present the results today and we will have a fantastic discussions. We also received three song requests from our listeners. Uh, the question was, what was your wedding song or what would you like to be your wedding song and we got three titles so we will play today hopefully if a uh, god of technology and our technician which actually is the same thing to be honest will allow it so hopefully you will listen to some nice music as well and also there is a possibility to call us during our live show we've got that equipment connected so in case you would like to call us and have a little chat about all our cool wedding facts and ideas and results then you have to call 60 29 75 50 60 29 75 50 greg 60 29 75 50. My, my God, Greg, whoa! You have a good voice for the I've radio. I've done voiceover work oh. <laughs> in my time. Yes, he has not told us that, so we are really surprised and excited. But as we said, we will start first with the song. And this song was requested by our lovely listener, Claudia. Actually, it's Claudia. Claudia. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying... I am under pressure here because actually Greg is from uh, from uh, UK fr from UK. Yeah, I'm from the UK. Yes. So, uh, well, I just can hear that he is a native speaker and that stresses me out because, you know, you, you can hear the way we speak and we are not speaking with the right accent or sometimes we mix up well, words. You guys so. sound awesome. And I, actually, if it makes you feel any better, when I'm here in Denmark, yeah. they tell me I sound very British. And when I go home to the UK, because I've been in Denmark for quite some time, they tell me I, I, I sound strange. Okay, so as we have promised, now we will introduce our lovely guest. And I actually think he should introduce himself. He has a voice for that. He had the courage to actually, you know, approach us and, and, and just come here. Guys, it can be any of you, our dear listeners. So we applaud him for the voice, for the courage, and hopefully also for the story. So, Greg... Welcome. Thank you very much. It's actually really nice to be here, actually. And it was really cool to, uh, yeah, see that you were doing today's show kind of all about weddings and marriage. And yeah. That's sort of why I jumped forward and said it might be interesting for me to be here because, of course, I'm a, uh, I'm a wedding photographer, actually. Yeah, exactly. We, we've heard a little bit about it. Uh, we were, of course, you know, uh, having a small uh, chit chat with uh, Greg before we went on air, but we left all the juicy details for now. So, Greg, can you tell us a little bit more about what you are doing with, with this whole photography thingy? 
Sure, I do. Um, I mean, there's wedding photography and there's what I do, which is called wedding photojournalism. So when you imagine sort of more traditional style wedding photography, you know, that's a couple standing next to a tree, smiling at the camera, trying to look perfect, all of that kind of stuff. That's almost the exact opposite of what I do. Um, <laughs> as, a, as a wedding photojournalist, I'm there to actually capture the day as it happens. And whatever happens is what I capture. So that can range from, of course, all the fantastic and wonderful things that go on on a wedding day to all of the other things too. It's about actually documenting the reality of it rather than, uh, yeah, trying to create a series of pictures that basically tells a very fictional story, which is what traditional wedding photography is about. And what's the outcome of your work? How does it, uh, you know, how do you present it afterwards to the couple? Is it a special photo album with some maybe text to it or how does it look like? Or, or like a like envelope with a letter like give me money or, the, or I will just <laughs> publish it all? <laughs> Could be well, both. It could be both. But um, no, I uh, I like to print. So they'll get an album uh, with everything in it. And, you know, I spend a lot of time actually figuring out how that album can sort of tell the story of their day. Um, to me, that's really, really important. Um, and uh, they also get a digital gallery as well. Of course they do it. You know, we're in the 21st century now. But uh, I love printing the photos, you know, and, and handing them over that way because that's, I think, you know, Photos are only really photos when you actually print them, in, in my view. So uh. so you do a story. So all you guys who are about to get married, or actually, as Greg also mentioned, maybe you already are married and maybe you even have some offsprings out of that, uh, you know, love union. <laughs> you, <laughs> my God. I get a lot of, they, I do a lot of weddings where they already have children or mm -hmm. they have children from other marriages and things like that. And there's something actually that if you are planning to get married that you should know if you have children. Actually, I, I shouldn't really tell you because maybe you'll do something about it because I, I, I get some really great photos of kids who look completely bored at weddings. <laughs> they get so bored. They really do. Actually, I've taken pictures of kids asleep during the wedding ceremony. Um, kids doing all kinds of stuff just because just they get so bored. They yeah. do. It's good a time for a nap. Yeah, it yeah. is, exactly. It is. Ch church always made me sleepy. I, I can <laughs> confirm. So, yeah, looks looks like, yeah. But for anyone who is actually interested in finding out more about the photojournalism, uh, how they could find you, Greg? Um, well, I'm on uh, Instagram is a good place to find me. Uh, actually, I post a lot on there, some of my photographs and some other things too. Um, so my Instagram is GMC Photographer. Um, mm. And then uh, it's my website as well, which I'm actually sort of reconstructing at the moment, but that's gmcphotographer.com. Um. For everyone who is interested, first of all, we will provide this information also on our Facebook fan page. And also, could you please follow Greg from tomorrow? because he made a story with us on Instagram and then you can see it. No, okay, you can see the story. Okay, yes, Greg made pictures of us and I think this is exactly yeah. like a radio journalism. So it is, and I'm actually taking pictures as we do the show today. Yeah, so actually, and we agreed on that, you know? Yeah, so guys, if you want to find Greg, GMC photographer on Instagram or I guess Facebook. What about Facebook? Is it uh, possible to find you, know, you I'm on. I am on Facebook, but, uh, you know, with everything that's been going on on Facebook and stuff, and I'm a little bit Instagram, it is. So Instagram, Instagram was where okay. you should find. Sounds like a good place for a photographer, huh? And I would just like to remind you people, our lovely listeners, <laughs> that if people. you'd like to call us and have a short discussion with Greg or with us or in general about weddings, our phone number is 6029755555. Again, 60-29-75-50. It's You've Got Five Options show and you are so welcome to call us. And if you are really, really stressed about how your voice will come out comparing to Greg, because I am right now, guys, you can also send us a text message on the same number because we have this mobile here and we can also read your comment if you prefer this means of communication which I wouldn't blame you because I feel like communicating with text messages right now to you guys. Uh, that would not work for the radio live show if you were communicating uh, via text messages, but you guys definitely can. And please uh, do so if you have something cool to say. 
uh, or even not cool, you know, it, 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 because who, uh, who are we to judge if it's cool or not, right? It is cool. Yeah. Okay, it is cool. Okay. The w- call us with cool things. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Greg, um I think the idea of uh, of this uh, wedding journalism is um, we talked about it briefly. It's it's really fantastic. I think it's also something quite progressive for people who seek for authenticity because of course, you know, many brides they want to look beautiful on the day. They don't want to have a picture when maybe they i don't know are crying or 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 spilled something on on someone or whatsoever but i think that this actually um hits this kind of authenticity need that lately i can see everywhere with any business so um cool stuff and i really hope that you will be able to contribute to today's show you of course you will be able that you will want to contribute to today's show also maybe with some stories or with some pictures or descriptions of the pictures because we don't have describe them in great detail exactly exactly (laughs) this is what you can do exactly perfect so guys as you remember we have asked you a couple of questions actually six to be precise um about marriage or weddings actually to be yeah i think they were mostly about weddings i would say or engagement so uh, the first interesting fact we would like to tell you and then compare it to your own opinions from the survey is that interest in marriage as such drops in western societies year after a year and here i found an interesting hopefully interesting fact that in general people don't want to get married as much as they did the median age at first marriage is now 27 for women and 29 for men up from 20 for women and 23 for men in 1960. so we can see the tendency and according to a report released last my last month by Pell Research Center, I have to find those guys to know if they are credible, 25% of millennials are likely to never be married. So what do you think about this, guys? Well, I think that the age, that's, that doesn't say anything, the median age, because our life expectancy uh, raises as well. So the sheer fact of people getting married later doesn't really mean that they are less interested in marriage. We also live longer, so we have some more time to actually mature and Mm -hmm. choose our partners better. So yeah, I don't think it's a sign of the dropping interest. But But what about the second statistic? 25% of millennials are likely to never be married. I'm not sure if this is so far off from now. I think like in the 60s, 70s, we had all the hippie world and I'm not sure if people were so interested in getting married. But it's a difficult thing to kind of say when you're kind of younger, right? Because maybe Mm -hmm. you haven't met someone and circumstances change. And so that's kind of a weird statistic, I think, to say I'm never going to get married because you don't really know, right? Life has a habit of throwing things at you. So I totally agree. But I think it just may be changed from this perspective of this is a thing that is expected from you by the society by the family to having more freedom in choosing if I want to be married or not, you know, 30 years ago, if you are not married, what's wrong with you, especially in some uh, cultures, like for instance, in in Eastern um, Europe, Europe, where we are from, right? So, uh, but I think that people are definitely taking more time. However, we were curious. How is it in Aarhus among our listeners? So we have asked a question, would you like to get married? Or if you are married, would you do it again, either with the same partner or what's your attitude towards the marriage? So guys, do you want to know the results? Yeah, of course, that'd be awesome. Okay, okay. Perfect. I can see that you are dying. 82% of people who took part in a survey said yes, and 18% said no. On Instagram, 86% said yes, and 16% said no. So actually, Instagrammers are more uh, into getting married than Facebookers if I might say, but still it's quite high percentage. And more than 90% of respondents on this question were women. So that's interesting. But among the men, it was only one who answered no. So actually guys were also saying yes. I think that's super cool. Well, I think like, because you were saying earlier about, you know, 
Um, one of the, the statistics is about people being older when they get married as mm -hmm. well. Um, and I certainly know from my own personal story as well that, you know, I mean, we got married after we had our first child. So I think once once children come into the picture, I think that, that changes everything. Um, and uh, my wife and I, we'd lived together for a very long time before we decided to get married. Um, and one of the reasons we decided to get married was because, you know, when we looked at... Um, when you have children and stuff and legally actually that ties up a lot of sort of uh, untidiness let's just say um if you know if for example you know god forbid something were to happen to my wife or to me mm -hmm. or you know whatever it was uh you know whatever potentially they could happen being married actually according to the law actually you know changes all that it means you know if god forbid something were to happen to my to my wife and we weren't married i wouldn't naturally um, be entitled to actually, you know, have my kids afterwards. Yeah, um, sure. So there, there, there's a lot of things um, that getting married actually legally actually sort of very easily sorts out for you. Um, so, so even though modern times, yeah. practically, it's still, you know, a good business case to get married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Marta, wonderful. But the, the, the thing is, I think many people are many people it's a generalization but with, with people that i talk to why do i need the paper why do i need the paper if we love each other and so on but on the other hand i think the paper could somehow help sometimes in some certain circumstances i think paper is one thing and there apparently are still very big uh, benefits from getting that paper that helps you solve a lot of practical issues yeah i mean it's not just around kids either it's like buying houses and renting apartments and eventually you're going to want to buy a car right and all of that kind of stuff um if you're actually married doing all of that actually is far simpler than trying to figure out all the paperwork if you're not married so there is a very practical reason for it actually I guess that practical uh, reason shoots you in your knee or foot or whatever when you're trying to get divorced, huh? <laughs> uh, possibly. I wouldn't know. Or actually, would I? Yes, I would know. I would know. Well, I think the house specifically is one of the nightmares when people are trying to undo the wedding that the holy union yes yes, yes. you have some experience with that you yes i am divorced oh. yes yes oh, okay yes that was, how was that <laughs> how, how was that well um it was kind of okay <laughs> no uh, i i got divorced in denmark so actually here the paperwork and everything is really really fast simple and easy now i've heard you can actually divorce via internet just by having your name id you know and you wait for a week for a decision and that's done so it's really fast but the 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 points that the, the pain points are of course the house if you share the common property that can be a huge uh, challenge and also if you have different ideas about the custody over the kids but if you can agree on both of those things getting divorced is like going to buy cigarettes in a kiosk i don't know for sorry for no better <laughs> metaphor that, or allegory that's if the guy can actually find his nem id card because you know what happened <laughs> you know when you're sort of married and everything everything's together and you know you put something down and you know your wife always moves it so i can quite imagine that those guys will have a lot of trouble finding their nemid card if they so, do decide to yes yeah, so guys keep your nemid close you know it it comes handy for many things that's another reason to keep it handy but guys we also have fact number two uh, and that is the magic amount of time people should be together before the marriage is 25 months and that is according to again some kind of a smart research of course of course this is average right so they uh, taken 168 couples and they were recording their history and so on and they saw that the most successful marriages were averagely together for 25 months before they got married so um, we have asked also our wonderful listeners what is the perfect amount of time that the couple should be together before actually tying the knot and 63% uh, of people said uh, it's between one to three years 15% and I love those guys although that shows a part of me said if, if the feeling is intense it doesn't matter they can get married on a day one so 15% of people would actually 
maybe do it spontaneously and 21 percent for some reason answered don't get married so <laughs> that was a little bit of a protest down there because i gave that option to choose from so guys basically 63 percent majority of our respondents said one to three years it falls into the 25 months what yeah, do you think yeah roughly i mean we we waited 13 years so <laughs> we don't fall within that at all actually but Having said that, when I first uh, when I first met my wife, we met in America some years ago. Yeah. Um, I knew right away, um, and actually uh, we, you, we you knew right away. Yeah, we that were, she's the one. Yeah, we were backpacking together, and then at the end of the trip, um, I had to go back to the UK, and she came with me to the airport, and um, uh, saw me off, and then uh, I went in to kind of queue up for the plane, and uh, was was rather upset, of course. Of course. Um, and while I was queuing up for the plane, a guy came up behind me and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, I saw you with that girl out there, man. She's still out there. She's still crying. And I was like, oh, my just, God. But it doesn't end there. right? What happened was I got on the plane mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking, well, I don't know what I'm going to do now. And I was very upset and stuff. And, and uh, I don't know if you've ever like taken flights in the US, but they overbook them all the time. Mm -hmm. So what actually happened was I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, you know, we've exchanged contact details. This was pre-email, by the way. Um, <laughs> so it was like a telephone number. Um, okay. So, of course, everything was certain but very uncertain because you don't know. And uh, what actually happened was the flight attendant said, well, over the tannoy, she said, well, we've, we've overbooked the flight today. So we're looking for three volunteers to get off the plane right now. And I immediately got up, grabbed my bag, and I was off the plane. And as I, as I, as I sort of escorted me out... She was still waiting out there for me. Oh, and, uh, oh my God. We managed to spend sort of a, a, an extra day together. I was flying out the next day um, in Washington. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I knew, I knew. So. What a beautiful story. Oh, Jesus, my God. Jesus, we are such a pussies. We are sitting here looking at Greg. Oh, I'm, but I, it's. I'm going to take a picture of them. No, the it's the moment is gone, Greg. But it's it's <laughs> actually I have to say it's it's a beautiful story. It really is, and um, it's it's fantastic that she knew from from the very beginning, you know. And uh, some people they actually have that feeling, you know, that this is the one. I I have a friend, in fact, who told me first time I saw my husband. I just knew he's the one. I just knew that I will get married with him, and and she's married with him, and she has a, a baby now. I think a one-year-old baby and they are very very happy so sometimes i guess you just know so 15 percent of people out there you are not crazy you just believe in in the magic of a love from a first sight i guess crazy but, in a good way yeah crazy. but you know statistics statistics are just average so it just brings all the possible solutions into one kind of a pot and makes an average out of it. But yeah. you did have some other statistics com uh, like coming up with that you are much more likely to stay married if you have actually spent some longer time uh, yes. before getting married rather than jumping into the marriage, right? Yes, I have here a very, very uh scientific quote from the research. Another more recent study published by researchers from Emory University following 3000 couples, I hope they were following them like from the distance because otherwise it's weird, found that those who dated three or more years were 39% less likely to get divorced than those who dated less than a year. Couples that dated for two years were 20% less likely to split. And of course, now it's a, uh, the question is, is it because we are getting more assured in what we feel or we, we know how to cope with problems better or we make better judgments? The research doesn't say, but the numbers are ruthless. Yeah, apparently longer we are with the person bigger chances we have to sustain a marriage. Statistically. Statistically mm -hmm. speaking. And actually, we got a couple of comments from uh, from our uh, Facebookers, I would call them the Facebookers, but in a cute way. For instance, uh, there was a very interesting comment from Justy, who wrote, Time together says almost nothing about how successful will the marriage be. I know a couple which married uh, like after one month together. They are now married for three, four years. Some can marry after four years together and divorce in one year. Other things are better predictors of success than time. For instance, shared values and goals, support and respect, the honesty of people, etc. There is a point in that. 
Yeah, but you know, I, I mean, I, I get it. Of course, I get it. But I, I, I think there really is something in sort of being together with someone for a really long time. I mean, quite often when you when you talk about love and you talk about passion and you know you're very passionate in those first. Uh, you know, those first months, It can, it can blind your mind, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I think, you know, th there's a there's sort of a period after that where you really get to know each other. And, you know, if you've actually ended up living together for like five years, ten years, or, I mean, you, you see both the best of each other and the worst of each other. And if you sort of experience the worst of someone and you can still get up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm still in love with that person then you're really onto something that's that's a true marriage in my and yeah. you can only really do that i think if you're together for for a really decent amount of time okay i i think it's very logical what you are saying i also believe that there would be people who would not agree with you but it's a it's a good point of view i think that you know um especially this this point about you know being really blurred by this in love and the hormones and stuff like this this really can make your judgment a little bit off, I would say. But you know, uh, the last thing I would like to say before our next song dedication is that I have noticed also a trend and I was reading an article about it and I wonder what your opinion is. Uh, of course, one of the biggest celebrity divorces right now is uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. If you ever liked Jennifer Aniston, probably you are laughing like, <laughs> but they were together for 11 years. And then they got married and they got divorced after two years. So and there is uh, actually quite some research and some sort of a, a different theories about people who are together for a very long time. And when they are finally getting married, they are getting divorced within the first year. So why do you think this might be? Do you have any ideas from the top of your head? I think people can split and get divorced at any time. I don't think it uh, has so much to do with the time. Uh, I, I mean, I do see a point of spending some time before you get married for certain reasons. So, for example, what Justy says beautifully, the thing about values and goals. How can you verify that you have the same values and goals in three months? You can't. You're so in love, someone can just say they have the same values and goals. You have no way of actually checking it out and verifying that it's true. So there is some time where you actually can see, are those values and goals the same? To actually talk about things, to have these kind of discussions like children, what about children? How about raising children and so on? So these are the things that in my heart I feel is beneficial for having some time before you get married. Of course, you can get married sooner. There is no problem. If you are meant to be together, you're going to be together anyway. But I think having some time together to get to know each other, to get to know those values, to get them discussed. And you can say, oh, we have the same values. I mean, we both want to have children. But if your partner thinks, yeah, but I'm gonna be spanking them all my life because it's a, a good way of raising them. And you are like, never. It's absolutely out. Do you think you really get to talk about these kind of things in the first month or two? I don't think it's something that, you know, pops up so easily. So I think values, they are, first of all, conscious and subconscious. There are driving values. There are things that are hidden in your subconsciousness that you just can't know in the first couple of months, just having, you know, this in love uh, discussion. So I think there is worth in spending some time together in grounding in this you know love and so on so that's just my opinion but whether you take it late i don't think that just because you spent 10 years and got married or five years and got married that it has that much to do with likelihood of getting divorced afterwards i think this is just as likely you can get divorced if you get married after three and after 10 after 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it, it, I think you're you're onto something there because there's there's like the values that we talk about because we know maybe that's what other people want to hear, but I think everyone has like a deeper set of values that are actually how you are as a person, and that's what you get to know after a period of time. That's true, guys. But remember that we are changing or all our lives. So for instance, if you are making a decision you want to get married, you also have to take in consideration that in five years, both of you might be two different people because we humans are changing and evolving constantly. Our values even are changing. Of course, some say core values are core values, but I think it's it's tricky. There is a lot of point in what, in what you are saying. 
And then again, you know, I would say, what if, you know, in five years I go through some, I don't know, spiritual breakthrough and I'm a completely different person, what my partner would do then? Because you cannot sign a contract. Our values stay the same throughout the marriage. So it's, it's actually, I would like to think, and maybe I'm stupid or crazy, that, you know, you can sense a person if, I will step now, guys, because I don't know what I want to say. It's this, you know, tacit feeling of will I be able to join the journey, you know, of this person, you know, regardless of the changing of, of the, yeah, I don't know, character, values, personality. I But we have Greg, you have seen your wife and you knew since the beginning. That's what you said. You got married after many years being together and you are happy together. Mm -hmm. So each individual story is really what you have to look into and it's your feelings that you are looking into. However, statistically, you have much more chance to end up being divorced if you got married quickly. Okay, so now I have another fact for you. And maybe Greg can tell us something a little bit more from his experience. But let's start with the fact. fact. According to our research, not any other shady research out there by university, our Facebook research, real and Insta life, real by life, far the most reliable, I'm sure. Exactly. People tend to agree that stopping the wedding is the bad idea. Because when we asked, is it okay to stop the wedding if you were in love with the groom or a bride? On Facebook, 85% of people said no. Only 15% said yes. And on Instagram, 60% said no. And 40% said yes. So all in all, what we see in movies, you know, I object or I I just, you know, crush the ceremony. Maybe it looks good in a movie, but apparently our um, our listeners are quite against the idea, at least the majority of them. So, Greg, we had a question to you since you photograph weddings and probably you meet quite a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. people getting married. Have you ever experienced or heard of a marriage being broken during the ceremony? Uh, I've not actually witnessed that. Uh, the, the only sort of interruption to a ceremony that I've had, which uh, happened quite recently, actually, was um, it was in a church. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the, the church is very sacred and everyone has to be quiet and I have to sneak around and take pictures and, and try not to disturb everything. And um, at this particular wedding, I, I was being very sort of, you know, extra quiet and extra. And um, what actually happened was uh, when they got to the the... The point in the ceremony where the where both the bride and the groom had to say here they say yes actually which is very they don't say I do they say yeah um, uh, when the groom actually had to say yeah he turned around to everybody he turned around to the entire church and said well I'm not just going to say yeah and then he walks forward and suddenly music starts <laughs> up from speakers at the back of the church and he does a whole musical number around, <laughs> around the church. Oh. <laughs> it was like suddenly it was a Disney musical. And of course, I, I sort of ran forward and I started taking pictures of all that going on and stuff. And so he, he sings a whole musical number. And then at the end of it, the speaker's shut down. He kind of takes her by the hand, walks up to the front and goes, yeah. And then the <laughs> ceremony just carries on as normal after that. It was, Sweet. Uh, Imagine those three to five seconds, what Bright had to, you know, like go through. It's like... I will not say, oh, my God, I, uh, I have she seen. had a look on her face. Let's put it like Did that. you make the picture of the look? Uh, I, I got managed to get some pictures a bit later on while he was sort of singing to her in the aisle. And then she looked happy. But I, th I, I could initially see like early on she was because she didn't know, of course, she was wondering, uh, why isn't he just saying yes? <laughs> um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a hairy moment, let's just say. For the uh, I would say that uh, he will pay for it. <laughs> he will definitely pay for it because, you know, romantic, romantic. Uh, she might have got a heart attack or something. You know, it's a, yeah, I think she, he will pay for it. Yeah. Long term. Yes. Long term. But uh, we got also some uh, comments from, uh, from uh, our dear Facebookers. I don't know if this even is a, a term. It now You've made it a term. I, I made now a term. Facebookers, yes. yes. So Joanna said no because it should not be one-sided. If he, she is in love with you, they should stop the wedding. Well, 
point taken. However, it's not always that simple. Linnea said, no, it's the bride and groom that decide if they want to marry each other. And if they do, it doesn't matter what you might feel for one of them. Well, I would um, also kind of agree. And then we have David who said the bigger question is whether they love you too. Knowing someone is marrying someone else while really being in love with you do justify speaking out at the wedding. But if you are not sure they are actually in love with you and you do it, it becomes a selfish act with no justification. It's a complex question whose answers depend upon the facts as they are. It's not a binary yes or no, just my opinion. I think he has a point because there are actually, when I was thinking about it, there are three situations that we might have here. So for instance, you are, ha the love of your life, whatever sex that is, is getting married and you know that that person feels the same way, but because of some circumstances you were separated and so on. So you know that you are both on the same page regarding feelings, maybe because of some stupid ego pride you didn't got together. The second situation is you are in love with that person still, but you are not sure of the feelings of that person. So it could be yes or no. And this is the tricky part because you, like, you know, what to do, how to figure out. And then the first situation is you are like stupidly in love with someone and that person doesn't want you and you just crash the wedding because you have a, a natural desire for drama and you just cannot let go. So there are three different scenarios here. And actually, I think as as David said, it depends on the on the on the situation. But the funny part is I, you know, in as we were preparing for it and asking some people, I never heard of a real life story of no. someone just no. crashing the wedding yeah. or objecting, you know, as the priest or official ask, you know, does anyone object? I have never heard of it in real life. Yeah, that's true. I have uh, looked online and of course I found some stories and those are stories from people who are submitting, you know, it was like most outrageous wedding stories ever and things like this happen. But I do have to say in I have never uh, heard of it. No, none of the people in my closer or, or further circle of, of friends or people that I could potentially know have gone through it. Um, however, I could assume it, it can happen. And you know, when you have the line, uh, if anyone objects, speak now or be silent forever or however the translation is, well, it's a kind of an invitation to say something. I would say that line was there for something, you know? Yeah, clear invitation. Yeah, yeah. Very like, you know, like, please d d disturb us now if you guys, want. Guys, okay, say it now, you know, so. But uh, no, I, I've never had it happen, never witnessed it, never heard about it, actually. And if I remember rightly, actually, in the in the very sort of traditional Danish ceremony, I don't even think they say that, actually. In the, in yeah, the, I they? think... I've not heard it, actually. No, I, I don't think so. I know that there are some uh, some churches, religions or countries that have removed the line. Um, maybe for a reason, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe there is a reason for case. that, you know, just in case. But the line was there, at least in is there still in some cultures or churches. So it's interesting that it is there. You know, I wonder what was the motivation behind it. But normally we, we would say, yeah, probably no, 85% of us would say no. But I guess there are circumstances where we could technically understand that kind of stuff. But I think it requires a lot of balls, mm. a lot of courage and, uh, you know, ability to deal with the consequences, you know, so yeah. a high the, crazy the, factor. The, the other thing it would require if you were having a town hall, like a, 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 a ceremony at the city hall is speed. If you've ever got married at the city hall, particularly here in Aarhus or probably very similar in other city halls around Denmark, it, it is super fast. It's literally like in, you say yes, you say yes, sign this paper, and then they sort of, they almost boot you out the door, actually. It's it's like less than three minutes. So if you were going to like put in an objection, you'd have to be pretty fast. <laughs> so for everyone who would like to stop the wedding in Denmark, in any of the city halls, you have three minutes to show up. There is no like, I'm getting late because the church ceremony is for an hour. Very good uh, 
Very good point, Greg. Yeah. But we also had a very similar question just on the other side, because um, we have asked our uh, our uh, Facebookers and Instagrammers, would you leave your fiance at the altar if you suddenly felt you are making a mistake? And half of the respondents would actually leave their partner at the altar. So 22% of, of, of guys on Facebook said yes. Uh, 28 said yes in special circumstances, but of course we don't know what the circumstances are. Then we have we had 22% saying no, I don't have guts, I wouldn't have guts for that. And then 28% said probably not. Instagram was more progressive here. 80% said yes and 20% said no. So uh, interesting. What do you think about that? And those stories I actually do know. You do know that? Yeah. yeah. Yes, well. I do. So uh, I've had these stories in my parents. They had very close friends that uh, one, uh, the, the couple was the friends uh, of my parents. And uh, I think it was the guy that left the girl. I don't remember who left whom, but they actually were there at the wedding and the other one did not show up. So these stories I know, I know also some stories, maybe not that, like directly at the altar, but very close to a wedding day, the person leaves another. So just like, like never, never heard of a real life story of the objection at the wedding or stopping the wedding at the wedding. Those stories I actually have heard of in my circle. But you know what I thought now that maybe those, uh, you know, objection guys that or girls that you see in movies, in reality, they are actually approaching the groom or the bride before the ceremony. And then the groom and the bride may not show up because they were already, you know, like, um, you know, taken by the ex past flame, you know, uh, that could be also an option. I, I would rather be left at the altar than have someone saying yes to the wedding because of the pressure of, you know, if I have my almost husband standing there and he doubts, I would really rather have all the embarrassment and having, you know, being left at the altar than being with someone who doesn't want to be with me uh, in a wedding, you know, yeah, in I, a marriage. When yeah, I was actually, yeah, go, go on. No, no, I was, I don't, what I'm curious about actually is if, is if you do leave someone at the altar, yeah, from my point of view, of course, I, I, in Denmark at least, I know how much weddings cost. <laughs> so who foots that bill, man? If you mm. like, you know, if you're like, I'm out of here, who's, who, who's going to pay for that, man? It's, it's, it's a lot of money. I totally agree. And I think this is one of the reasons why people are going with the weddings that they don't want to go with. I know. F <laughs> so that's, that's ease of, you know, uh, you okay. know I we know. didn't spend much on this wedding. See you later. <laughs> but I actually have to tell you that I know personally uh, 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 one woman who uh, got married because uh, the pressure of all the preparations and the money that the families have spent was so high. And she told me three months before the actual wedding, I knew already that I don't want to get married, but I didn't know how to back out because, you know, everyone was so much into planning and into everything. So she married someone that she didn't want to marry. So this is actually, you know, a uh, double sided sword or however you say it. It's, it. it can be dangerous, you know, when you go into marriage under pressure. I also read a story that's actually a celebrity, uh, an actor was actually, I think his name was Mario Lopez. He cheated on his uh, fiance on a bachelor party and she found out just before the wedding. She went with the wedding and then she divorced him. So, you know, it's like. That's pretty smart, actually, because if he was like pretty loaded, you know, I'd, I'd you know, if you were going to be a little bit strategic about it just to kind of get him back, then I'd, I, you got to be thinking the same, right? If we actually get married and then we get divorced, he's got to give me half of what he owns. <laughs> so that's actually pretty smart. I think. Mm, yeah, I think that that's not such a bad solution at all. As a payback, I think it's pretty smart. But, you know, I also know a couple personally that called off their own wedding together. They actually were seven days before the wedding and they got in a terrible fight and they were like, you know, fuck it, we're not doing it. And they called off and they actually called the, the, the best man and the, and the best uh, maid of honor, maid of honor. Yeah. Guys, we are not getting married. Fix it. So those poor guys had to <laughs> inform everyone that the wedding is off and they had to call off, you know, all this uh, reception party and everything. And then those guys, after two, three months, they got back together and they are again engaged. 
and they are again planning the wedding but this time they don't really know what to do because no one wants to come <laughs> uh, no one wants to be no, there we came to our wedding. I wonder why. <laughs> well on one hand I have to say I admire the courage you know But on the other hand, you know, to, I would just recommend them go, guys, to the city hall and, you know, um, just do it. In three minutes. Yeah, in three minutes, low profile, you know. And then when you are married, you can throw a party because then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to go. That's a good Whatever. way to go. Yeah. So, uh, but we also got some comments and this one was actually, a couple of them were interesting. Made me wonder because... Uh, the question, should you leave your fiancé at the altar if you have doubts? No, because marriage is not a game or a spontaneous decision, in my opinion. You should have decided long ago before the marriage. But actually, this is the question, guys. Exactly because it's not a game and you have to be sure if you suddenly realize that this is not the way to go, shouldn't be you, you, you should be responsible enough to actually call the thing off, right? Or am I having a hole in my logic? No, because I mean, you know, the, the, there's some, for example, the, the, there's there's some weddings that I've photographed where, you know, the, the, there's a heck of a lot going on around it. I mean, a, a wedding I just shot, for example, you know, there was there was uh, quite a few members of their family coming over from America, and of course they'd booked their tickets, you know, months and months and months in advance, and uh, there's there's a lot of sort of very um, practical details to to put into place that don't just involve you, but involve a lot of your family. And so actually choosing to do that, potentially you're, you're sort of going to be causing a lot of a, a, a ruckus within your family because if they're suddenly having to, you know, cancel flights and, and things like that, and um, potentially it's, you know, it, it, it would be a big decision to make because it's not just going to affect you. It's going to affect your entire family. Don't you think that maybe that's why those couples who are long for together for th they are together for a long time, maybe they are getting into this preparations, getting married and they just go with the wedding, not to upset anyone and then they divorce after six months. Do you think that this could be a reason why we have some marriages like this? I don't know, because I uh, some of the marriages that I know that have ended up pretty soon with divorce mm -hmm. were actually the marriages that were pressured by the family, but pretty soon. After a year or two, maybe a couple wanted to live together and the families did not want to allow uh, this happening and putting extreme pressure on the young people uh, to uh, get married. And those relationships ended very fast because it was not the real intention. The, the couple just wanted to live together. They wanted to actually see how it would go for them. But because of the pressure, they got married. And those marriages ended in this kind of way, in half a year, in one year, and so on. So I don't know any couples that were uh, together for a very long time, then got married and uh, divorced quickly. Uh, so I have, no, I have never talked to this kind of people, don't know what would have been going in their heads. Okay. Guys, last question for you before we have to end the show. Would you leave your fiancé at the altar? if you would realize that this is a mistake or you have some doubts. Marta? I would say that uh, because I would rather be left at the altar if my uh, fiance, if, um, if my husband-to-be would have doubts, I would return the favor. Greg? Oh, that's a difficult one because I, I, I had absolutely no doubts. But if I did have doubts, then yes, I think I would try and have the courage to come forward and say, you know what, this isn't the right thing to do now. Yeah, and guys, I think I would do the same. So we are um, probably in kind of a slight minority, but it's it's not a bad company. So thank you for today. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website the5options.com where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks!